Hello, everybody, and welcome to Geopolitical Trends. My name is David Waralu. So good to be with you as always. Well, well, 40, 40 African leaders ignored the United States and went ahead and met with Vladimir Putin in Moscow. This is very significant. In this video, I am going to share with you my assessments about this shifting in global order because that is a sign for that which is happening before our own eyes and provide you insights as to what it means for the big picture. But before I do this, like always, I'd like to thank the channel members and I'd like to thank you subscribers. And if this is your first time, please uh, uh, subscribe and smash the notification button so you will be notified every time I upload a new video. And I can thank you all for your continued support. Let's dive in into this. Well, Interesting enough is that uh, uh, Russian President Putin welcomes 40, yeah, 40 African leaders at Moscow conference. And here is the kicker with the promise. You know what Vladimir Putin, President Putin promised them? He promised them money, nuclear power, arms and free grain. Yes. That's what they, they, they're going to get. So, so it's called the, the Russia Africa in a multipolar world. That is the name of the conference, which basically what are we talking about? Global South is ignoring Washington, D.C. and its endless conflicts and wars. And rightly so. So, so I'm going to provide you some sort of a, a background to put things in perspective so you, you, you'll have a clear idea of what this is all about. Well, here's the thing. What's interesting about this is that the meeting that took place, it was during the same time that the Chinese president, President Xi, is visiting uh, his friend, President Putin, for three days. So the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, that is, took time from the meetings with the Chinese president, President Xi, who is, as I said, arrived a few days ago uh, for a visit, for state visit, that is, uh, with his counterpart uh, in Russia. And the reason the, uh, the Russian president took time, because he wanted to speak to African lawmakers, as I said, from over 40 African countries. That's what he wants to talk to them about, you know, and offer them promise of economic and military aid. Yeah, what the West is not disclosing is Despite the sanctions, the economy of Russia is doing well. As a matter of fact, Russia is doing far better <laughs> because of the sanctions. Yeah, the sanctions backfired on the West. That, that's, and the Western media outlets is not going to disclose this. So the people, Westerners that is, uh, are manipulated and are oblivious to the reality because the government choose not to disclose that. So here's the thing, like, as I said, to put this within the global context, you know, there is right now, as we speak, a battle. Yes, a battle for influence in Africa. The, that, that battle is hitting up. You all remember the trip of the uh, uh, Secretary of Treasury, the trip of the Secretary of State last. And I did a video on it for you guys. And I even put in a title, uh, uh, Africa told the Secretary of Treasury, go home, we don't trust you. So, and what's interesting about President Putin in his conversation with the 40 representatives of the African countries is that he remind them, he remind the delegates from Africa about Russia's long standing close ties, which plays to his favor, because now is the changing dynamics of the global order. And I argued this about a year and a half ago, that Africa is going to become the next competing ground between the West and the East. Basically, the geopolitical uh, conflict competing ground. And this is now because of the need for a multipolar world, which the Russian president argued from that point. That was specific, that was calculating, that was strategic. Because now, if you want to move, if you, as a head of state, for example, you want to move the global south, 
in any direction, you have to ensure that the multipolarity is clear to them and it's understood. And that's exactly what the Russian president did and said when he shared uh, the uh, uh, award with, with the delegation. So, so he's playing to his favorite. So, and also it's a sentiment that is echoed by many African countries, you know, and, and it's the reality. Africa is not going to forget what the West has done or have done in that part of the, of the world, you know, you know, taking advantage of Africa's resources. Do you guys, I, I, I'm sure you have an idea, but do you have any idea how much resources Africa has? You know, I'm even thinking, by the way, to do a, a live stream on this topic on a weekend. What do you think? Yeah, let me know. Just leave me in the comments there and, and, and we can discuss this even further uh, 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 down the during live stream. So, so the natural resources, and it makes perfect sense, but also historically, historically, which a lot of people do not know, is that the Soviet Union back then had a good relationship with Africa. So that is where... Uh, and, and, and given now how the changing of the global order, given now how the lingering resentments in Africa of the European colonial era, it makes perfect sense. So what President Putin said was very calculating and strategic. So, And I'm going to share with you part of the, I had a chance to read his, uh, his uh, st uh, speech or statements that is. He told the delegates, and I quote, let me get the quote here for you guys. He said, Ever since the African people's heroic struggle for independence, it has been common knowledge that the Soviet Union provided significant support to the people of Africa in their fight against colonialism, racism, and apartheid. How it helped many African uh, countries to gain and protect their sovereignty and consistently supported them in building their statehood, strengthening defense capabilities, laying the foundation of their national economies and workforce training. End of quote. Yeah, so basically what Vladimir Putin, if I am to put my geopolitical analyst hat on, what he did was tapped into the historical ties that have always put Soviet Union with Africa. And now, thanks are coming a full circle. That was why I said what I said a year ago or a year and a half ago for a reason. And there is a video there out there on the channel that, that, that document what I said. So there is a record for it. And I argued back then that will Africa become the next geopolitical competing ground between the US and, and Russia and China, that is. And here it is. That is exactly what's going on. Now, you need to put this in a context also of what's gonna be coming this coming summer. So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about the meeting that just took place between Vladimir, P President Putin, and 40 uh, delegates from Africa. This conference is nothing but a warm-up event for the next Russia-Africa summit, which is going to be taking place in July 2023, this year. That is what it's said. And this one, it's going to be held in St. Petersburg, you know, where most of the continent, get this guys, most of the continent's head of states are expected to attend. You can just see the optics of it from a global affairs from a geopolitical perspective, from an international uh, 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 point of view. That is what's important. So, and also because this one, uh, remember, the second meeting that's going to be taking place in July 23 was supposed to happen last year, I think. But due to what happened with COVID and all that stuff, it was canceled because the last, uh, the first one was held in Sochi back in 2019. And I remember that one because I was following uh, that one at that time. And really after that, in, in that first meeting in Sochi, Sochi in 2019, it's what prompted me to reach my conclusion as far as Africa is going to become 
the competing geopolitical competing ground. And it is. So the US is realizing that is losing ground in Africa. By the way, guys, if you like this video so far, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you have not done so. And I will truly appreciate you for doing so. So, so as I said, and then that meeting back in, uh, in Sochi in 2019 uh, uh, was attended by 48, get this, 48 out of 54 African head of state. So, and, and this is where I see this is coming. Now, here is the big picture. And again, I'm going to provide you just brief analysis. And like I said earlier, if you like this and you would like me to extend on it even further, and I happen to know a little bit about Please make, just leave me some comments there and we can further this conversation during a live stream this coming weekend. And I'm open always to your suggestions as far as topics. So here's the big picture. And the big picture is this. Like I mentioned last time, President Xi is visiting uh, Russia. And now you have 40 lawmakers from Africa are attending also a meeting in Russia. So the big picture of all this is tells you that the global south is moving eastward. The whole Africa is pivoting east. It's no different than what just happened in the Middle East with now Saudi Arabia sort of uh, 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 is going to be trading in the Chinese currency. That's a sign for pivoting east and that's it, where the trend is headed. Soon you will be hearing some countries in the Gulf are doing the same. So this is no different here. But there is another event uh, uh, that mark all this within the big picture. You know, as 40 lawmakers from Africa meeting with the Russian presidents, it marks the 20th anniversary of the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq. And we all know how disastrous that was. You know, well, what's interesting, and I had a chance to read an article, by the way, that was uh, released, not an article, it was a statement that was, really, was released by the Chinese Foreign Ministry. It was a very poignant, I'm telling you guys, you know, as an analyst, I'm seeing that China is taking off the gloves. <laughs> it, it, it's about, it's realistic. I'm not laughing out of laughing, but it's realistic. It's time also for you to confirm that the world is shifting from a unipolar to a multipolar order. That's exactly what it is. So the Chinese Foreign Ministry released a report just yesterday, you know, further unveiling the decline of the American democracy and the chaos it has brought to the world under the disguise of so-called democracy. And like I said last time, guys, you know, it's my country, you know, I will defend my country, but when my country does wrong, I, I'm going to have to speak up. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Because it's the truth. We have abused our power. You know, uh, power is a responsibility. You know, if you are in position of power, it doesn't give you the right to just trample on people and do whatever. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. Because power is a responsibility. So, so uh, and, and here is what I found very funny because I read some other uh, uh, sort of uh, feedback about that uh, statement from the Chinese Foreign Ministry. Some analysts from both sides of the Atlantic, right here in the US and over in Europe, called the report along with an increasing number of developing countries growing discontent over US hegemony. They consider that as a slap in the face for the U.S. Yeah, it's a slap in the U.S. face, which is very problematic. You know, that's degrading in a sense, but uh, uh, sort of we created the setting for all this. We created the problem. We had, like as I always say, I'm a true form policy establishment that they have no clue what they're doing. It's like just today when I posted this, uh, that, that post for you about uh, the uh, article in the foreign policy uh, saying that well, we'll, we'll shut down the, uh, the, uh, the uh, aviation industry in China if China provide arms to Russia. 
you know who the heck are we to be dictating to countries and if it is we are playing fair how come we are providing weapons to ukraine but china cannot provide weapons to russia that's double standard you know nobody's gonna buy that argument yeah and that's exactly why this statement is considered to be a slap in the u.s face you know? and it helps remove now the facade of the american democracy it's because, like I said before, I don't shy away from saying this, and I challenge my countrymen, anybody in this country, I will challenge him or her about how democracy is an illusion. Even that American dream, what dream are we talking about? When people are suffering, you know, they're suffering quietly. You know, some of us were lucky enough to have an understanding of really how corrupted the system is and how things are. So we are, and I speak for myself here, I don't speak for others. I'm taking preventative measures, financially, economically, health-wise, you name it. Why? Because I'm aware of what's going on. And this is also where I see my responsibility, sharing the knowledge with you. You know, if I am to sit on that knowledge, as I always say, what's the point? Yeah, that is my point for all this one. So, so here's my brief conclusion for you. Like I always say, I like to keep those videos here short and concise. So, it looks like Africa is willing and has already pivoted east and cement its, uh, its ties with both China and Russia in order to prosper. Africa has a lot of resources. You guys won't believe the natural resources Africa has. Yes, it is uh, sort of uh, 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 marred in, uh, in corruption. Oh, it's beyond belief. But it's no different than any other place in the world. Like when I did the video about Indonesia. Well, when I say Indonesia, I wasn't referring to the president himself. Joko Widodo, he's trying his best, but the system itself. But if you are the head of a government, the buck stops with you. you the, you're in charge. You're going to have to get the government's act together. Same thing in Africa. The problem in Africa is this corruption. If they get rid of corruption and get their act together, you won't believe how prosperous Africa will become. And this is why if you like me to do the live stream during the weekend, we'll talk about Africa. And there is a lot to be talking about. So, so make sure to leave me some of your comments, questions if you like, and I'll be happy to answer them during the live stream. As always, guys, remember geopolitics impact your daily life in more ways than one. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.